Hey hey hey, my name is Polish Links and welcome to Sunrider Academy! Today we are going to begin a new arc. That's why you see what you see. There are to four choices. However, two are... Well, already done, so we are not going through this. Ava's arc was the first one, and Asaga's arc was the second one. We've completed both. Everything is on the channel. And right now we can choose between Sola Arc and Chigara Arc. Obviously, maybe not obviously, but I'm not going with Chigara Arc now. It's for the last one when I will feel maybe a bit exhausted of the game. <laughs> because I will probably... Well, maybe because of all the clicking. But also because I don't really like her. Sorry, not a fan of her. Never was and, well, I even started to hate her because uh, of certain uh, of certain events. Not in this game, in the other, but never mind. I won't spoil it to you if you haven't played it. So we are going to begin Sola Arc, no question about it. Let's do it. This might be interesting because, well, let's face it, in Sunrider her story was damn interesting. And it might be as well in here. What a long day of work. My back was sore after a long day of filling out forms and studying. As I was walking out of the courtyard, I saw Sola sitting under the tree. Hey, Sola! Ah! Are you waiting for someone? No. I merely had a slight dizzy spell and wished to sit down. Uh, uh, are you feeling alright? You've got to take care of yourself. I'll be in trouble for the swim team if you get sick before a swim meet. My body is well. Are you sure? Yes. Sola stood from her seat. Ah. Her knee gave out and she stumbled down. Hey, 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 hey. There's no way that you are right. I'm sorry. I must have sprained a muscle during practice. Come on, I'll walk you to the transit station. I helped Sola up and put her arm around my shoulder. Um. Okay, but I assume you are a bit taller, that might not really have, why not give her a piggy ride? That would be a better idea, that is also the best idea for, bo for, for both parties. <clears throat> be careful, okay, and tell me if I need to go slower. Understood. We arrived at the transit station. You have my gratitude for accompanying me this far. However, I'll be fine from here. Okay, don't bullshit me. There were at least 300 steps up the mountain before Sola would reach the shrine. And of course we know that because we counted. Because that's how boring our life is. No way, I'm taking you to the shrine. No, I don't need... You're obviously hurt, I can't let you walk up the mountain alone. Understood. We got onto the next transit to the shrine. Whew! I was panting after carrying Sola up all the steps to the shrine. Good job, Kato! I had to carry her on my back for the second half because of her leg. Yes, good idea. You, you should have done this from the very beginning. But at least we were finally here. <sighs> Alright, we are here, Sola. I put Sola down on the ground. Fag. Sola cried out in pain as she collapsed to the ground. Oh shit. She was drenched in sweat. Sola, don't worry. I'm going to the hospital. No, need. Don't give me that. You're a seal. No. Don't! Look at me. Hey. Just then, Sola's hand turned translucent. What the... I stumbled backwards and feel, fell in shock. She was disappearing before my eyes. Kehito... Her face was partially translucent. The spring pool... I must get... Was she talking about the mild temple? What the hell did the pool have to do with this? Quick! Take me! Oh shit, here goes nothing! I lifted what was left in, of Sola into my arms and ran to the mountain pool. I put Sola down beside the pool. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The water! I splashed Sola with the spring water. 
More on my body. Ah, shit. I tore Sola's sweater off and carried her into the water. Even though I had no idea what was going on, this was no time for modesty. Either because she was missing half of her body, or because of the Adrian rush, Sola felt as light as air. Uh, hang on, Sola. I lowered Sola into the pool. I watched an ape as the spring water slowly caused Sola's body to materialize again. Huh. Her breathing slowed down to a regular pace. I wiped away the sweet sweat on, the fair, on her face with the water. Are you feeling better? The disconnection has passed. The what? Whatever I had just witnessed was clearly not of this world. Told you this might be an interesting route. I was clearly a man of enough intelligence to know that the galaxy ran by science and not magic. Sure, there were phenomena occurring throughout the galaxy right now, which to the untrained eye might appear to be magical, but all such phenomena could eventually be explained as the science has developed. In 500 years, an average person had been shown a warp drive. They would have uh, thought such a device was the product of sorcery. I stared at Sola as the basis of my understanding of the universe was shaken. What was that? I know he managed he tore her sweater off, but when did he got rid of his sweater? <laughs> I do not know. The disconnection have come randomly throughout my life. Whenever one strikes, I feel as if my consciousness is being torn from this universe. I still had no clue what Sola was talking about. So you're saying you just randomly start disappearing and you have no idea why? Yes. The holy water in this shrine has helped reverse the process. However, with each attack, the water has been becoming less effective. The intensity of frequency of the disconnection seems seem to both be increasing. During my childhood, merely my fingertips disappeared. However, as I matured, the disconnections have spread along my extremities all the way to my vital areas. The resulting fatigue and pain have increased drastically as well. My heart raced as Sola seemed to explain what sounded like a fatal illness in a complete monotone. You've got to be kidding me. And you have no idea how to prevent this? No idea. Further. Shit, even more bad news. With each occurrence of the disappearance, others lose certain memories of myself. It is entirely possible that you have forgotten an event we shared in the past as a result of this attack. Don't mess with me. How could this even be possible? I speculate that my body is not decaying, but rather that my entire existence is being wiped from this timeline. You are not forgetting those events, but rather, the past is being written as if those events never occurred. I grasped my teeth. I knew that while time travel was impossible with our current technology, the ancient Rubians had technology capable of temporal manipulation. And this shrine was filled with lost technology. I had to get to the bottom of this, before Salo was hurt even more. She dried herself off and put her clothes back on. I'm sorry you have to have to see me in such a state. However, I have accepted that the disconnections are beyond the scope of what modern technology can resolve. Please do not overly concern yourself with me. Once I fully disappear from this world, it will be as if I never existed at all. Therefore, you need not fear. You will not feel loneliness or grief. Your regular school days will continue as if nothing had happened. Indeed, to the point of view, it will truly be as if nothing had happened. Don't! Bullshit me here. There's no way I'm just going to let you disappear, Sala. This isn't black magic or the will of God. This is just the power of some piece of machinery. Rubian technology may be beyond our understanding, but it was still made using scientific methods, so it can still eventually be understood and manipulated even by us. And I'm not about to be defeated by an inanimate object. <sighs> Please, you speak so... Don't give up yet. I'm going to get to the bottom of this and save you. I understand. Despite saying all that, I knew well how difficult this was going to be. I was no technologist, and I had not an inkling about an ancient Ruvnan technology. I was just a student. Uh, the only lead I had was to ask Chigara for help. I was obviously just a ludit where the technology was concerned compared to her. Don't worry so. I think I might have a way to figure out what's going on. I have a friend who knows a thing or two about Ruvian technology. 
with a busy day. It sure was. It's been break, and I have a day off, and I have 200 monies. You know what? I will. No, I will not skip all the birthdays after all. Uh, do we have anything here? No, here. Yes. Okay. Swim meet Kendo holidays 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 science exams got it. Whew. I need to buy this. And this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and memory foam pillow as well. So let's work. I searched so as she swam through the pool. She, def she was definitely back to normal. Had I never seen that this connection occur, I wouldn't even have noticed anything different. Whatever I did to her body, the damage did not appear permanent. This was the age of technology. Science had created countless gadgets and phenomena which went beyond what normal people would consider natural. I had heard that scientists could make everything from enormous artificial planets to tiny nanomachines. But even considering that, wiping someone from our plane, uh, our plane? Our planet, probably, of existence altogether seemed to cross into the realm of science fiction rather than science. Hey, are you alright? Oh, press. What are you doing here? Just doing a random visit. It's hard to see you looking so bothered. Usually it seems like you just carry on without a single word in the world. Well, as much as I would have liked to tell Eva what was going on, I wasn't exactly sure how to put it in words. No matter what I said, I would probably sound crazy. Besides, I had to respect all of privacy. I couldn't just tell other people that she was slowly disappearing. I just haven't been sleeping that well lately. Really? Yeah, there's this whole game that's been wiping my ass on the floor. Just thinking about it makes me depressed. Hey, idiots. <sighs> Anyways, thanks for fixing the problem with the swing club's paperwork. Things have been much smoother now that they are submitting their forms electronically. Yeah, no problem. So I saw the prisoner and swam over. She picked herself out of the pool and walked over to the bleacher bleachers. Good day, Madam President. Good day! Is there an issue? Not really. I was just shaking up on me, that's all. Has Kato been giving you any trouble? I hope having a maid overseeing the swing club hasn't been causing problems. No. We appreciate the efforts of our manager. Really? Well, I, I guess it's alright. Let me know if the club needs any help. Understood. Well, I better get going. I have more work to do. See ya. Farewell. Have a little pool, already buried in forms. We should return to practice too. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I entered the pool and saw the swim club members gathered around the water. What was going on? Sola stood at the highest diving board. Oh, you couldn't be serious. She wasn't going to dive of that huge thing, was she? Sola jumped off the diving board and slid into the water, hardly even causing a splash. The junior members of the club applauded and cheered as Sola reappeared above the water. Sola swam over and left the pool. Good day. Sunny Sola gasped in pain and clutched her stomach. Instinctively, I grabbed onto her. So, who's the matter? Oh shit, was another disconnection happening? Do not mind it. It is merely a cramp. I disperse to the, the other members and walk Sola to the bletchers. Are you sure? I lead in and whisper to her. Are you having another disconnection? Do we need to get out of here? No. As I said before, it is merely a cramp. It will pass momentarily. So I picked up a bottle of water and took a sip. That scared the hell out of me. At this rate, even the smallest sign of pain was going to make me think Sola was going to start disappearing again. Damn it. Recently my psi has been irregular. What do you mean? It is nothing. So that suit apparently already recovered. You need not fear for me. As I have said, once the disconnection occurs, there is a period of stability. I don't expect another one to occur for many months. 
Still, don't push yourself too much, okay? Understood. She dived back into the water. Even though it was a false alarm, I felt anxious increasing in my chest. There was no telling when another disconnection was going to occur. When it happened last time, I could clearly remember even Sola's neck and chest fading out of existence. If they were gradually getting worse, then I didn't even know how many more attacks Sola could withstand before disappearing completely. Could I investigate the shrine more? But what could elude it, like me even, uncover? <sighs> the only thing I could do for now was to just stand by Sola's side until a possible deed opens up. I entered the science club, of course. Yo, Chigara! Ah, good day, Mr. Manager. Chigara was in front of the metal replicator as it printed out a new gadget. Are you busy? No, I'm just watching the new anti-gravity ball print. This model should be twice as powerful as the old ones. Can I help you with something? E yeah, I, I saw something interesting the other day, you know? I wasn't really sure how to even explain the last situation without coming off as Looney. As Looney. Do you happen to know anything about Ruvian temporal manipulation? Eh? Well, I suppose. It's pretty high level. Some of it... Oh my god, so much text. Some of it is understandable in theory, but making something practical is out of the question, as most applications require the use of materials or energy levels which we currently lack the capacity to create. And no, making time machine to go back to the past is obviously impossible. Well, it's not like I want to go back to the past or anything. I never knew Mr. Ranger had interest in Ruvian technology. Ah, uh, well, uh, something interesting happened to me the last time I visited the Ruvian shrine. So interesting that I have no idea how to put it in words. It's hard to describe, but I think I happened to see something disappear into thin air then, and then rematerialize. I know it sounds crazy, but I thought it could have something to do with the Ruvian monoliths at the shrine. You know, some of them are really old and we don't really understand how they work. So I just thought that some of them might be lost technology. I looked at Chikara expecting her to look at me as if I had gone crazy. Instead her eyes were sparkling with interest. Disappearing to fear. Well yeah. And then rematerialized. Pretty much. Chikara left the matter at the counter and started packing her bag. We have to investigate this phenomena, Mr. Manager! That was much easier than I thought. Chikara loaded a bunch of mechanical equipment into her bag and rushed out of the lab. I could hardly keep up with her as she grabbed the next transit to the shrine. Club hours are over for today. Shortly thereafter, we arrived at the shrine. Oh. Hey Sola! I went over to Sola and explained to her the situation. I convinced she got that there might be a function piece of lost technology here. Don't worry, she does know anything about your condition. I just hinted that there might be temporal anomalies occurring in the area. We'll need her help if we're going to figure anything out. Understood. Good day, welcome to our shrine. Ah, oh, ah, oh, good day. We are here from the Sun Red Academy Science Club. We heard that there might be interesting equipment technology here on the shrine and was wondering if we could perform some scans. Don't worry, we don't damage any of the monuments. Of course. We welcome those who seek knowledge here. Please follow me. Chigara went around the shrine scanning the various monuments. See anything in there, Snake? Eh, uh, these monuments are definitely fascinating pieces of technology. While some are merely ordinary pillars made of black ore, others possess gadgetry quite beyond my understanding. I believe most are meant to create optical illusions at full the senses. However, I do not see anything related to temporal manipulation. I see. Well, I didn't really think we could be able to get to the bottom of Sola's disappearances so easily. Oh, here's something. My hopes went up. You found something. This monolith possesses an enormous power generator inside. There may be enough power in the monolith to generate entire hurricanes. To think something so small could generate so much power. Ancient Ruvian technology is quite amazing, isn't it? Sure, that would be amazing, but that still didn't have anything to do with what was I looking for. In the end, Chigara wasn't able to find any unusual temporal devices at the shrine. She still looked pretty satisfied for I think there would be so much technology here. I should have investigated the shrine sooner. Ah, thanks for letting me around this castle. It is no problem. Please come back again if you wish to investigate further. Of course. Hey, I'm going to stick around here a bit longer. You can go on ahead. Okay, have a good evening, Mr. Manager. Sorry for talking your time. Don't worry, it was fun. Bye bye. See ya. Woo. She waved as off as she 
walked down the stairs. I sighed in disappointment. Could Chigara have been something? No way, Chigara was the surest, surest person to be a genius in my immediate social circle. Then, was the cause of Sora's disconnections not lost technology after all? If so, what could possibly cause such a supernatural phenomena? I have concerned you. I'm sorry. Nah, don't worry. This is merely my fate. You need not to go out of your way for me. It's still too soon to give up. I'll find a way, Sola. Understood. I will find a way, damn it. I will. I have to. I just have to. I said to Sola at her usual spot at the courtyard. Hey, Sola. Sola placed her chopsticks on her bento box. Why do you still speak to me? Just because a battle I know about your disconnections doesn't mean I'm not going to eat lunch with you from now. Do you not think I'm unnatural? Eh? Yeah, you are totally unnatural. I've never met someone who speaks in so many long words and in a complete monotone. But you're still my friend, and it doesn't matter what condition you have. Besides, it's not like the disconnections are contagious. Probably. In my studies, I have found the control directive of all living organisms to be to pass on their genes to the next generation. Doing so ensures the continuation of the species. Yet the lifespans of all life forms are finite. Unfortunately, you waste moments of your finite life speaking to someone certain to disappear from your lifetime. While you are surrounded by a host of receptive and fertile females, you choose to interact with me instead. <laughs> wow. Wow. Your actions are illogical. Well, I like to act illogical. They are counter to the survival of your species. They can only be described as self-destructive. I flick Sola on the forehead. Ah. Idiot. Humans are bigger than that. We actually believe in things like friendship and loyalty. Besides, I hope that wasn't just a fancy way of saying that you think all guys are perfs. Hey. But my studies. <sighs> Maybe you should increase your sample size to more than just base animals and insects, huh? Sure, non-sentient life behaves that way. But we are humans, aren't we? We are able to make civilizations, establish laws, and promote the sciences because we've learned to master our base instincts. More or less. Besides, how did you even end up thinking like that anyways? You always talk like a computer, not a girl. I'm sorry, my qualities are not sufficiently effeminate for your tastes. Was she just making fun of me now? Anyways, I'm not going to quit bothering you until I make you laugh. Hey, laugh! I really even see you crack a smile. But one day, I'll make it happen! A ginormous woo -hoo 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 from your face. You will laugh so hard that you look like a fool. And then you will collapse to the floor, suffocating because all the laughter is killing your stomach. Hey, I shall make a mental note to refrain from making such disruptive noises. Figures, huh? As a general rule, I advise against making goals which have near nil chances of fulfillment. Odds don't matter to me. I'll make it happen. You're a strange man, says the monotone android girl. Very well, I should permit you to accompany my meals for the meantime. Ah, that's a relief. However, I ask that you refrain from attempting to emit such a rambunctious noises from my mouth. I'm certain, as the student council was present, causing a disturbance in the courtyard would be problematic for you too. I guess I will have to wait until we're somewhere else. Then I shall resume my meal. Okay. Fine. <laughs> Okay, 30, 30 monies. Emperor. Oh, come on. Thank you. Oh, god damn it. Okay, that's more or less. More or less fine. This thing should be here.
It's morning. It's time to go to school. Okay, I don't know what's causing the game to stagger a bit. I hope my PC won't decide it didn't actually decide to run some stupid processes out of nowhere that are not needed at all. I don't know why, but it's from fuck. Yep, it happened after all. Uh, so basically, I will need to fuck freaking finally move and actually check what it, well, how to repair that problem on the PC. Well. It's back to normal now, so yeah, courtyard. Maybe something good will happen there again. Mm. Okay, the rest not really needed. What I need is race fitness and race charisma now, for sure. And yeah, that's basically what I will probably concentrate on. I also need to race luck. So let's do it. Oh. Okay. Uh, I felt like I should get some better karma for the coming days. I wonder how Sola was doing too. Oh, hey, are you keeping me well? Yes, there's no need to concern yourself with my well being. Once a disconnection strikes, I have a period of stability. So, walk me to a monolith and walk me through, the pray to a, uh, through a prayer. May the blessings of the infinite emperor reach you. Hey, so I was wondering something. Yes. The water from the mountain pool stopped the disconnection last time, did it? Indeed. When the disconnections occurred in the past, did the mountain water stop the disconnections then too? Yes. So far, it is the only thing which can completely reverse the process. Full immersion in regular water also increases the interval between the attacks. While swimming is not exactly my hobby, the disconnections have led me to join the swim club. So that was the reason why I saw with the swimming club captain. I would never have known. However, with each attack, the effects of the water weaken. Is there anything special about the mountain pool? While we perform rituals to purify the pool, it is for all intents and purposes merely an ordinary pool of mountain water. I'm skeptical the water has any special properties. That's one more mystery, huh? The mountain pool is a quiet place. Okay. But I guess the, the water comes from somewhere there, so maybe there is like uh, a hidden cave or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Its serene beauty gives me solace. To a lesser degree, I enjoy the sounds being submerged in water brings as well. Except I really doubt that just being somewhere quiet was going to stop her from disappearing the next time it happens. And there that end, huh? The head priest speaks that I was found alone in the mount as a child. My origins are completely unknown. Perhaps my birth parents discovered my strange affliction and choose to abandon me and attempt to start anew with another child. What a piece of shit parents they would be, that is true. Certainly these connections are an unnatural event. If that was the reason for my abandonment, I cannot place blame on my parents. It was way too depressing to talk about with a straight face. Stop that, Sala, please. Don't be so down on yourself. I was not being unnecessarily pessimistic, but merely making a reasoned observation. The truth does not cause sadness in me. Such a response would be unnecessary as sorrow does not change our reality. Still, Sola's complete lack of emotions disturbed me a lot more than her disconnections. I do not have particular dissatisfactions at having lived at the shrine, nor does my lack of partners bother me. Any disadvantage caused by my orphanhood to my future professional and social aspirations are non-issues to one who will be wine from the timeline. Please do not overly concern yourself too much. Ah, frustration boiled inside of me. 
Even though I wanted to shout it so that she was being too accepting of fate, I knew that I had no idea how to prevent her disconnections. In fact, she was right that getting angry or depressed wasn't going to bring us one step closer to a solution. I had no idea what I should even say to her. S I'm sorry, I'm not very helpful. But one day, one day, I will give you a reason to be pissed off. Eh? Once you figure out your little disappearing problem, you'll be pissed off that you suddenly have to worry about getting a job and make a living like the rest of us. You'll be feeling like an idiot then, knowing that you were just chilling your entire life when you should have been freaking out like the rest of us. You think parts of your body randomly vanishing at inconvenient times is problematic? Just wait until you have to fill out a job application and you have three years of missing work experience. I know that feeling. <laughs> it sucks. Really. It's so hard to get the job without work experience. <laughs> You'll be wishing you could disappear then. So I raised her sleeve and covered her face. Such foolishness. Beneath her sleeve, I could tell that she was stifling a smile at my stupid bravado. It no matter. I'm pleased by your visit. Yeah. I'll try to come around more often. I have taken too much of your time. I shall see you tomorrow. See ya. So I picked up a broom and started sweeping the ground. Please make a donation. Of course I'm willing. My god, this is so good. Okay, Rubian Shrine, pray. Oh, I don't really have money, do I? As I was leaving the school, I saw sitting, on, sitting under the tree. Good evening. Hey, so, what are you doing here? Lately, my thoughts have been strange. Shall I... Shall you accompany me? I wish to go on a walk. Ooh, ooh. We took the transit to the park. We strode around the trees in the twilight. The disconnections have been a secret part of my life for so long. You are the first to see Takura aside from the head priest and his wife. Really? Don't worry, I won't go around telling anyone about it. Besides, I'm pretty sure nobody would believe me even if I told them. It is a strange feeling. It is unlike a fatal illness for when I found disappear. Nobody will be left in sorrow at my death. If death is even what awaits me at the end of this road. Nobody will remember upon me and be in pain. The fact, that fact has always given me souls. Is that really true? I no longer know. I had accepted my lot in life. Knowing I was doomed to vanish, I moderated my emotions. I comforted myself with, with rationalizations. Despite that, I'm scared. The thought of vanishing fills me with unspeakable dread. It is natural for the... For the God damn it. To fear death, is it not? I will have no legacy. Every trace of my existence will be wiped forever from this universe. The knowledge that nobody will even remember me. It is... It's so sorrowful. So long. I'm sorry. I have troubled you. Ah, I felt so useless. <laughs> I had thought that any problem could be surmounted with just afforded hard work. But what could I do to keep Sola from disappearing? Don't worry about me. Anyways, I still haven't given up yet, okay? As you said, there's pl still plenty of time until the next attack, right? We can still figure out what's causing the disconnections and end it. Once we do that, we'll just go back to being a regular girl. Come what may, the only way we lose is if we give up too early. Ha! <laughs> you and your promises! You can count on me. I'm the student council vice president. I'm not going to let a member of the student body down. It sounded so lame, but it was the best I could do. I wasn't even the president, but I was talking so confidently. And it was just the stupid student council. I was like I was some dashing space captain who could just rush in and save the day. But Sola needed me, and I couldn't back down when someone else was counting on me. Understood. Please take care of me. Yes. And leave me from this wretch curse. Of course. I promise. Then I will hold you to your word. 
I lied wide awake on my bed that night. Despite having promised Sola I would save her, I had no idea what those connections even were, much less how to stop them. Uh, Google the problem? <laughs> Maybe that would help. Probably not, but you know. Always some option. Finally, I stood up from my bed. I had to do something. I was going to the shrine to navigate the monolith even more. They were pieces of technology, there was no doubt about that. Besides, weren't people supposed to pray to the monoliths to find answers to life's mysteries all the time anyways? Anyways, there was no harm in trying. I put on my coat and got ready to leave the house. K Kato? Where are they? Cover for me, mom and dad find out, okay? Hey? Wait! I unlocked the door and went outside. <laughs> the mountain was pitch black at night. Being in the mountains was totally different from the city, alright. Oh well, it's not like there were many dangerous white tank monsters around here, probably. I turned on my hollow to light my path and walked up the steps to the shrine. Phew! Now that I was here, I had no idea where to even begin. Well, I just could start with a prayer. I walked up to the monolith and knelt down. Please tell me how to stop Solange's disconnections. Obviously, that did absolutely nothing. I should have known that. Uh, I should have known better. Having made a fool out of myself, I picked myself up. As I walked away, I felt something tug on my leg. What the? I lost my breath as I stumbled. Without other but stone tug, I looked around. Did I trip on a twig? No way, I always see Solo sweeping the shrine ground too endlessly. Was that was it just my imagination? Surely there was nothing here. I walked further into the shrine. There was a large chamber in front of me with wide open doors. Strange enough, I felt a powerful aura emanating from the chamber. I crept inside being careful not to make any noises. Before me was a huge monolith. The air in here was strange, as if it was softly vibrating. I looked around. I was definitely alone. Well, I was here to investigate, wasn't I? I stepped up and placed my palm on the monolith. Please. If the Infinite Emperor really was ever so almighty, then tell me how to save Sola. All of a sudden I heard a woman's voice behind me. She cannot be saved. For how so? for how can something which never existed in the first place ever be restored? I spun around to you, so no wonder. Who are you? Where was that voice coming from? Someone who's always admired you. A real person? Or is it just the monolith technology messing with my perception? Um, uh, you are a clever one. Well, that is what I've always liked about you in all your incarnations. I think I know who that voice belongs to. So, you are just the machine talking, you are not a real person, are you? I suppose that's pretty close description of what I am, maybe. For now, just consider me an embodiment of the monolith. Can you help me save Sola? The person who was Sola does not exist in this timeline. That's not possible. I go to school with her every day. Everyone else recognizes her. She's definitely a real person. Well, if you are going to be like that, looks like I don't have a choice. There are an infinite number of realities occurring simultaneously right now, right? The present, the past, the future are occurring at once. Those realities are separated and you have no means of traversing between the universes. But that was not strictly the case in the past. You were talking about time travel. Oh, it was her talking actually. In a manner of speaking, the past. Could you mean that ancient Rubians had technology to travel between these alternate universes? But what does that have to do with Sola? Well, you're a pretty clever guy, huh? So I think you'll be able to figure out the rest. See ya! Wait! Hey, 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 hey. you're not so bad looking in your younger form either! That's definitely her! Definitely her! Alrighty! I jolt away in my room. What the living hell! I rubbed my forehead. What the seriously all a dream was that? But I could have sworn going to the shrine last night. Was I transported here through the power of lost technology? I got out of my bed. Oh, you're up early! Hey Murray. Did I randomly rush out yesterday, right? For night for no apparent reason? What? 
No, you went to bed like totally normal. Uh, what are you talking about? Was it just an unbelievably realistic dream? I admit, I couldn't quite remember when I started to have the thought to go to the shrine yesterday night. Could I have just fallen asleep and started dreaming that I decided to go to the shrine while lying awake in the bed? Speaking of which, I couldn't remember anything about how I got from my home to the shrine in the middle of the night. It was just like the setting just changed after I ran out of my apartment and I was just instantly at the shrine. Ah, uh, god damn it Kate, of course it was a dream. Only now that I was fully awake could I notice all the weird gaps in the dream. Besides, there was no way that just touching a woman could make a woman's voice just appear out of thin air. I must just be way too stressed out about Solas' connections. I fell into bed and quickly went to sleep. Again. It's the weekend. What? Swim it. What? I don't get what happened now. He woke up and then went to sleep again. What? Okay, let's win this. One, two, three. Gold medal. Obviously. Du, 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 du. What the hell? Eight. Uh, what? Well, something seems to be messed up. What the hell is going on? Uh, hey, uh, I, I'm, oh. Okay. Okay. So somehow the previous day had 12 hours, even for the day actually in this planet, on this planet has 10 hours. Well, whatever. Never mind that. Just a bug in the game, I guess. Alright, let's end the episode here actually, and we'll try to figure out what's going on in the next one. Hope you enjoyed it, and see you then. Bye bye.